The night air was crisp, a welcome relief from the stuffiness of the party inside. I, Jack Harper, found myself on the balcony, my mind miles away from the laughter and the clinking glasses that filled the opulent room behind me. My wife, Elise, mingled effortlessly among my colleagues, her laughter ringing clear even from where I stood. We had been the perfect picture of marital bliss to any outsider, but lately, our reality was far from it. The party was in full swing, celebrating the launch of a new tech product by my company, a project that had consumed me for the better part of the year. As the head of the project team, the success felt personal, yet the joy was overshadowed by a gnawing suspicion that had taken root in my heart. Elise, with her radiant smile and magnetic personality, had always been the center of attention, and tonight was no exception. I watched her through the glass doors, chatting animatedly with a group that included my colleague Marcus. Something in the way she leaned in to whisper something to him sent a jolt of unease through me. Our marriage had hit a rough patch, with my long hours and her growing resentment towards my absence. Conversations had become terse, and the warmth we shared seemed to cool with each passing day. I couldn't shake the feeling that Elise was drifting away from me, seeking solace elsewhere, perhaps in someone like Marcus, who had the time and charm I seemed to lack lately. As I contemplated our strained relationship, my phone buzzed with an urgent message from work, pulling me away from the party. Duty called, despite my desire to stay and watch over Elise. With a heavy heart, I informed her of my need to leave, her disappointed gaze stinging more than the cold night air. I'll be back soon, I promised, a promise that felt hollow even to my own ears. Elise nodded, her smile not quite reaching her eyes, and turned back to the party to Marcus. That night, as I attended to a crisis at the office, my mind was on anything but work. The seeds of doubt, once planted, had begun to sprout into a thorny vine, wrapping around my thoughts, constricting my focus. Little did I know that party that night would be the catalyst for a series of events that would unravel the very fabric of our lives. I returned to the party later than expected, finding it winding down. Elise was nowhere to be seen. A quick inquiry revealed she had left with Marcus and a group, headed to an after-party. The betrayal I felt was immediate and sharp, a physical ache that mingled with my fears and suspicions. The drive home was a blur, the silence of the empty seat beside me a stark reminder of the growing chasm between us. That night, the party did indeed change everything. It set me on a path of discovery, of truths hidden and lies whispered in the dark. My quest for the truth about Elise and Marcus had just begun, a journey that would lead me through the shadows of doubt and into the light of a painful reality. The week after the party was a blur of meetings and deadlines, but the gnawing suspicion about Elise and Marcus refused to leave my side. It was like a shadow, dark and persistent, coloring my every thought. Our conversations were strained, filled with the kind of polite niceties you'd exchange with a distant acquaintance, not the woman you've loved for over a decade. Then came the day that turned my suspicion into something tangible, something I couldn't ignore. It was a regular Tuesday morning at the office. The hum of productivity filled the air of stark contrast to the turmoil inside me. I decided to grab a coffee from the break room, hoping the caffeine might clear the fog of unease that had settled over me. As I approached, I heard laughter, the kind that shared between good friends, or perhaps something more. It was Marcus's voice laced with a familiarity that set my teeth on edge. I paused by the door, unseen, my hand frozen on the handle. That's when I heard her name, Elise, slip from his lips, followed by a recounting of their night out after the party. Yeah, Elise is incredible, man. Marcus's voice floated through the gap, light and carefree. You should have seen her that night. She's not just beautiful, you know. There's this fire in her. It's irresistible. The colleague he was speaking to, Tom, chuckled, a sound that grated on my nerves. Sounds like you've got it bad, Marcus. But isn't she married to Jack? You know our Jack? The project lead? There was a pause, a moment of silence that felt like an eternity. Yeah, she is. But let's just say, boundaries were a bit blurred that night. Elise is feeling neglected, and who am I to not offer some? Comfort. The casualness of his confession, the blatant disrespect, lit a fire within me. My fist clenched around the coffee cup, the heat barely registering. 
the conversation shifted, moving on to Munden office gossip, but I was no longer listening. The words echoed in my mind, a loop of betrayal and humiliation. I retreated silently, the coffee forgotten, my mind racing. The clarity I sought was now clouded with anger and hurt. How could Elise do this? Was our connection so easily disregarded? The foundation of trust we had built over the years seemed to crumble with every step I took away from that door. The rest of the day passed in a daze. I watched Elise from a distance, her laughter, her lightness, a stark contrast to the weight crushing my chest. The space between us, once filled with love and shared dreams, now seemed insurmountable, widened by secrets and lies. That evening, as I lay in bed next to her, watching the rise and fall of her chest in peaceful sleep, I realized the extent of my turmoil. I was at a crossroads, torn between the love I still felt for her and the trail that soured it. The overheard confessions had changed everything. I knew I couldn't let it rest. I needed answers, for better or worse. The journey to uncover the truth about Elise and Marcus had just begun, and I braced myself for what lay ahead, uncertain of what I would find. In the cold light of morning, the turmoil of the previous day morphed into a resolute determination. If my life with Elise was to continue, I needed the truth, no matter how it might shatter the fragile peace of our current existence. So, with a heavy heart, I decided to embark on my own investigation into the nature of Elise's relationship with Marcus. The first step was to gather evidence. I was a software engineer, not a detective, but the digital age offered tools that even the most novice investigator could wield. I started with the basics, installing a tracking app on my phone that Elise often borrowed for her runs. The guilt of invading her privacy weighed on me, a stark counterpoint to the fear of what I might discover. Next, I conned through our bank statements and credit card bills, searching for any out-of-place transactions that might hint at clandestine meetings. My heart raced each time I uncovered a charge I couldn't immediately place, but they all proved innocuous under scrutiny until I found the receipt for a boutique hotel downtown, a place known for its discretion and luxury. It was booked under my name, but I had never set foot in the place. The date coincided with one of the many nights Elise had told me she was staying with her sister to help with the new baby. The revelation was like a punch to the gut, driving the breath from my body. I sat, staring at the glowing screen, the numbers and letters blurring through my tears. This couldn't be happening. Not to us. We were Jack and Elise Harper, the couple our friends envy for our mutual affection and understanding. How had we come to this? With the evidence of infidelity growing, I knew I needed more concrete proof before confronting Elise. I couldn't base our future on half-truths and maves. That's when I remembered Marcus's penchant for boasting about his conquests, often leaving a digital trail of his escapades. Social media, I realized, could be a treasure trove of information for those who knew where to look. I spent the night scarring the internet, digging into Marcus' online presence. It didn't take long to find photos of him and Elise together, looking more intimate than colleagues should. Each picture was a dagger to my heart, but I saved them all, compiling the evidence that would either condemn or exonerate my wife. As dawn broke, painting the sky in hues of pink and gold, I sat amidst my gathered proof, a man torn asunder by love and betrayal. The investigation had only just begun, but already the toll it took on me was evident. Yet I couldn't stop, not when every unanswered question was a barrier between Elise and me. I knew what I had to do next. It was time to confront Marcus to demand the truth from the man who may have stolen my wife's heart. The thought of facing him, of acknowledging the possibility that Elise could prefer him over me, was nauseating but the need for clarity for closure propelled me forward. The investigation had begun as a quest for the truth, but with each step, I felt myself slipping further into an abyss of suspicion and despair. I clung to the hope that Elise's love for me was as unwavering as mine for her, that there was an explanation for it all. But as I prepared to confront the man who could unravel the life we had built, I couldn't help but fear what I might discover. Confrontation was never my strength. The thought of facing Marcus, with his slick charm and easy lies, turned my stomach. Yet, as I made my way to the office that day, determination steeled my resolve. I had to face this head-on, for the sake of my marriage for my own peace of mind. Marcus was already at his desk when I arrived, the picture of casual confidence. 
He looked up as I approached, a smirk playing on his lips as if he knew the turmoil churning inside me. Jack, buddy, what can I do for you? He asked, leaning back in his chair with an ease that irked me. I took a deep breath, searching for the right words. We need to talk. About Elise. Saying her name aloud, in this context, felt like a betrayal, but I pressed on. His expression shifted, the smirk fading into a cautious mask. Elise, what about her? He feigned innocence, but the slight narrowing of his eyes betray him. The office around us buzzed with the usual morning activity, oblivious to the tension that crackled in the air between us. I leaned closer, lowering my voice. Cut the act, Marcus. I know about the hotel, the night's out. I've seen the photos. For a moment, Marcus seemed taken aback, his facade cracking. But then, surprisingly, he laughed. Is that what this is about? Jack, you've got it all wrong. His tone was dismissive, but there was a hint of something else there. Was it guilt? I wanted to lash out, to demand he admit his wrongdoing. But instead, I found myself listening as Marcus spun a tale I hadn't expected. Elise was helping me, Jack. I've been seeing someone. Someone married, and Elise was covering for me. Those nights out, she was my alibi, so my girlfriend's husband wouldn't get suspicious. His words hit me like a wave, leaving me reeling. It was plausible, wasn't it? Elise, ever the loyal friend, helping Marcus maintain his secret affair. But why hadn't she told me? Why go to such lengths to hide it? The web of lies and secrets seemed to grow more tangled with every word Marcus spoke. He offered no proof, no concrete evidence to support his story, just a plausible explanation that left me more confused than ever. I don't believe you, I said finally, though my voice lacked conviction. Why should I? Marcus shrugged, a gesture that seemed both dismissive and oddly sincere. Believe what you want, Jack, but you're wrong about Elise. She loves you, man. She was just trying to help me out. Maybe I took advantage of that, and I'm sorry. Truly. I left his desk with more questions than answers. The clarity I had sought seemed further away than ever. Could Marcus' story be true? Was Elise simply caught in the middle of someone else's affair, an innocent bystander to Marcus's deceit? The day passed in a blur, my work forgotten as I wrestled with my doubts and fears. I realized then that the truth I sought couldn't be found in bank statements or social media photos. It lay with Elise in her words in her eyes. I needed to talk to her to hear her side of the story without accusations or assumptions. That evening, as we sat across from each other at our kitchen table, the air heavy with unspoken words, I knew it was time to unravel the tangled web of lies and secrets. It was time to speak with Elise, to lay bare my fears and listen to her truth. Only then could we hope to mend the frayed edges of our relationship and weave a stronger bond from the threads of honesty and trust. Dinner passed in an uneasy silence, the clinking of cutlery against plates echoing loudly in the tension-filled room. Elise's eyes flickered with a mixture of concern and confusion as she watched me, her fork paused mid-air. I knew I had to break the silence, to bridge the gap that lies and suspicions had carved between us. Elise, I began, my voice steadier than I felt, we need to talk. It's about Marcus. Her reaction was immediate. Her posture stiffened, and the fork clattered onto her plate. But it wasn't guilt that I saw in her eyes, it was fear. What about Marcus? she asked, trying to mask her concern with a veneer of curiosity. Her attempt to appear unaffected was betrayed by the slight tremble in her voice. I took a deep breath, the weight of the moment pressing down on me. I know about the hotel bookings, the nights you were supposedly with your sister or with him. I saw the pictures, Elise. I heard him talking about you. Each word felt like a betrayal, a violation of the trust and love we had shared. To my surprise, Elise didn't react with denial or anger. Instead, tears welled up in her eyes and a sigh escaped her lips. A sigh of relief, as if a burden had been lifted. Jack, I wanted to tell you I really did, but I didn't know how to without causing more trouble. Marcus was using me as his alibi because he was seeing someone married, someone we both know. Her words echoed Marcus's claim, adding weight to his version of the story. She went on to explain how Marcus had roped her into his scheme, appealing to her sympathy for his predicament. I thought I was helping a friend, 
but I see now I was only helping him deceive another. I'm so sorry, Jack. I should have told you the truth from the start. The relief I felt at her words was palpable, a lightness spreading through my chest. Yet, it was tempered by the realization of how close I had come to letting my suspicions destroy us. Why didn't you tell me, Elise? Did you think I wouldn't understand, that I wouldn't support you? Elise reached across the table, her hand seeking mine. I was afraid, Jack, afraid of how it would look, how it might affect your relationship with Marcus and the others at work. I didn't want to be the cause of any trouble for you. Her admission laid bare the complexities of our situation, the tangled web of relationships and obligations that had led us to this point. It wasn't just about trust between us as husband and wife. It was also about the external pressures that could influence our actions and decisions. We should have faced this together, Elise. No matter the consequences, we're a team. I said, my grip tightening around her hand. From now on, no more secrets, okay? We deal with everything together as a team. Elise nodded, tears of relief and love mingling on her cheeks. Together, she echoed, a promise sealed in the meeting our eyes. Uncovering the truth hadn't just dispelled the shadows of doubt and suspicion. It had also reinforced the foundation of our relationship. We had emerged from the ordeal stronger, more united. The path ahead wouldn't be without its challenges, but as long as we walked it together, I knew we could face anything. The tangled web of lies and secrets had been unraveled, not by pulling it apart strand by strand, but by facing it head on together. In the end, the truth hadn't just set us free, it had brought us closer, binding us with stronger threads of trust and understanding. The next morning felt like the first clear day after a relentless storm. There was an unspoken understanding between Elise and me, a mutual acknowledgement of the ordeal we had weathered together. Yet one final task lay ahead of me, confronting the person at the center of this tumult, Marcus. With a newfound resolve, I reached out to Marcus, requesting a meeting outside of work, somewhere we could talk without the prying eyes and ears of the office. He suggested a quiet cafe downtown, a neutral ground. As I sat across from him, the early morning light filtering through the windows, I couldn't help but see him in a different light. He was no longer just a colleague or the man who could have been my wife's secret lover. He was a person burdened with his own complexities and mistakes. Markets, I started, my voice calm but firm. We need to clear the air about everything that's happened. He nodded, a serious look on his face that I had rarely seen before. I owe you an apology, Jack, for involving Elise in my mess and for all the distress it caused you both. I was selfish. His admission took me aback. I hadn't expected him to be so forthcoming. Why did you do it, Marcus? Why drag Elise into your affairs? He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I thought I was protecting my relationship, but I see now I was just avoiding the inevitable. I dragged Elise into it because, because I knew she wouldn't say no. She's too kind, too loyal to her friends. The conversation that followed was difficult yet cathartic. Marcus opened up about his struggles, his fears, and the realization of his mistakes. He spoke of the woman he was seeing, the complexities of their relationship, and the guilt he felt for dragging Elise and me into his personal drama. As I listened, I couldn't help but reflect on the myriad ways in which people's lives intersected, often in the most unexpected and challenging circumstances. We were all navigating our own personal battles, sometimes clumsily, leading to unintended consequences for those around us. Where do we go from here, Marcus? I asked, once the confessions and apologies had been laid bare between us. I'm going to make it right, Jack, starting with coming clean to everyone involved. It's time I faced the consequences of my actions, he said with a resolve that I hoped he would maintain. As we parted ways, a weight lifted from my shoulders. The confrontation had not only revealed the truth behind Marcus's actions, but had also opened a path to forgiveness and healing. I had gone into the meeting prepared for a battle, but I left with a sense of closure and a hope for a new beginning, both for Marcus and for me. The drive home was reflective, filled with thoughts of the revelations of the past few days. I realized that while the truth might be painful, confronting it was the only way to move forward. Lies and secrets could only fester in the shadows, causing more harm the longer they remained hidden. Elise greeted me with a warm embrace, a silent question in her eyes. It's over, I said, 
and in those two words, we understood that we were turning a new page. Confrontation and revelation had brought to light the truths we needed to face, not just about Marcus's deception, but about our own fears and insecurities. In facing them together, Elise and I had found a deeper, more resilient love, one that was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. In the days that followed my confrontation with Marcus, the ripple effects of our revelations began to settle into a new reality. Marcus had kept his word, coming clean about his affair and the web of lies spun to protect it. The fallout was immediate and, in some ways, cathartic. His confession brought issues to light within the office that went beyond personal relationships, sparking discussions about honesty, integrity, and the impact of our actions on those around us. Elise and I found ourselves at the center of a quiet storm of whispers and sideways glances. Some viewed us with sympathy, others with barely concealed curiosity. It was uncomfortable, to say the least, but together we faced it with a united front, drawing strength from the trials we had overcome. One afternoon, as we walked through the park, a sense of normalcy amidst the chaos, Elise squeezed my hand. How are you feeling about everything? She asked, her voice soft but filled with concern. I considered her question, the weight of the past weeks pressing down on me. I'm relieved, I admitted. Relieved that the truth is out there and we can move forward. But I'm also worried about you, about us. How do you feel? Elise stopped, pulling me to a bench where we sat facing each other. I feel guilty for my part in all of this, for not being honest with you from the start. But I also feel stronger, knowing that we faced this together and came out stronger. I love you, Jack, more than ever. Her words were a balm to the lingering sting of betrayal and hurt. I love you too, Elise, and I forgive you. We're in this together, remember? No more secrets, no more lies. As we sat there, the world continuing around us, I realized the fallout from Marcus's actions had forced Elise and me to confront our own issues, our communication breakdown, and the distance that had grown between us. It was a painful process, but necessary for our growth as a couple. The following week, the company held a meeting to address the recent events. It was an opportunity for healing, for airing grievances and proposing changes to ensure a healthier work environment. Marcus, to his credit, stood before us all and apologized, not just to Elise and me, but to everyone affected by his actions. It was a turning point for the company, a chance to rebuild trust and foster a culture of openness and support. For Elise and me, it marked the beginning of a new chapter, one where we no longer allowed the actions of others to define us. The fallout from the revelations had been difficult, but it also served as a catalyst for change, both personally and professionally. We learned the importance of facing our problems together, of trusting in each other's love and support to weather any storm. As we walked back home, hand in hand, I felt a sense of hope for the future. The path ahead was uncertain, but with Elise by my side, I knew we could face anything. The fallout had cleared the way for a fresh start, one built on stronger foundations of trust, understanding, and love. The season shifted subtly around us, the crisp edges of autumn blending into a softer, more forgiving landscape. With the change in weather came a transformation within our home and hearts. The fallout had indeed been a storm, fierce and relentless, but in its wake it left a clarity and a freshness to the air we breathed, to the life we shared. Elise and I began dedicating evenings to long walks, where the only agenda was to talk, or sometimes to enjoy comfortable silence. These moments became our sanctuary, a space where wounds healed and love deepened. One evening, as golden hues painted the sky, Elise broke our comfortable silence with a reflective tone. Do you think we can truly start anew, Jack, after everything? I stopped, pulling her gently into my embrace, the warmth of her body a reassurance against the cool air. Yes, I do, I replied, conviction strong in my voice. But it's not about forgetting what happened. It's about learning from it, growing stronger because of it. We have a new beginning because we chose to face the storm together, not because we pretended it never happened. Elise leaned back, searching my eyes, and, and in them, she must have found the sincerity and love I felt. Smiling, she laid her head against my chest. I'm so lucky to have you, she whispered. No, we're lucky to have each other. I corrected gently, and we continued our walk, 
wrapped in the comfort of our shared journey. In the weeks that followed, we took tangible steps towards our new beginning. Together, we attended counseling sessions, a decision born from the recognition that love, though powerful, sometimes needed guided nurturing. These sessions weren't always easy. They opened up vulnerabilities, exposed fears, and sometimes left us raw. Yet each time we emerged with a deeper understanding of each other and a renewed commitment to our marriage. Professionally, the landscape was changing too. The company's open forum in the wake of the fallout had initiated a transformation in the workplace culture. Transparency, accountability, and empathy became the pillars upon which we began to rebuild. My relationship with my colleagues, even Marcus, found a new equilibrium. There was an acknowledgement of past mistakes, but a shared focus on moving forward. Elise and I also made a significant decision about our future, one that symbolized our commitment to this new beginning. We decided to renew our vows, not as a grand gesture for the world to see, but as a private affirmation of our love and resilience. On a crisp morning with only the rising sun as our witness, we spoke our promises to each other, vows that acknowledged our past struggles and celebrated our future. I vow to cherish our love, to learn from our past, and to build a future where we grow together, I pledged, my voice steady with the weight of my commitment. I vow to trust in us to face challenges with you by my side, and to always remember the strength of our love. Elise responded, her eyes glistening with tears of joy and love. As we embraced, the sun breaking over the horizon, I felt a profound sense of peace. The journey to this point hadn't been easy. It was marked by pain, by betrayal, and by hard truths. Yet it was also a journey illuminated by love, forgiveness, and the promise of new beginnings. Our path forward wasn't guaranteed to be free of obstacles, but we had each other, and that was our greatest strength. This new beginning wasn't just about moving past a difficult chapter in our lives. It was about embracing the opportunity to write our story anew, with love and understanding as our guiding lights. In the quiet that followed our vow renewal, a period of introspection began for both Elise and me. We found ourselves often in the embrace of our home, sipping on warm cups of tea, reflecting on the tumultuous journey we had embarked upon. These moments of reflection were sacred, a testament to the resilience of our bond and the unyielding power of love and trust. One such evening, as we watched the embers glow in the fireplace, casting a warm, soothing light across the room, I found the words to express the maelstrom of emotions that had been swirling within me. Elise, I began, my voice a whisper in the tranquil space, this journey, it's taught me so much about the depth of our love, about the importance of trust. Elise turned to me, her eyes reflecting the flickering light, and nodded. It's been a revelation, she agreed. I've learned that trust isn't just about believing in each other's fidelity. It's about trusting in our love, and its strength to carry us through the storms to be our beacon. I took her hand, feeling the warmth of her skin, the gentle pulse of her life force. And love, I continued, it's not just a feeling. It's an action, a choice we make every day. Even when the shadows of doubt creep in, even when we're tested in ways we never imagined. Elise squeezed my hand, a silent acknowledgement of the truth in my words. Love is also forgiveness, she added softly. Forgiving ourselves for our imperfections, forgiving each other for the pain we might inadvertently cause. It's in forgiveness that we find the truest expression of love. As we sat there, enveloped in the comfort of our shared understanding, I realized that this journey had not only tested our love and trust, but had ultimately fortified them. The challenges we faced peeled back the layers of complacency, revealing the raw, unvarnished truth of our commitment to each other. Moving forward, I said, a sense of resolve threading through my words, I want us to remember this feeling, this understanding we've reached. Let it be the foundation upon which we build our future. Elise nodded, a determined glint in her eyes. A future where we continue to grow, to challenge each other and ourselves, to cherish each moment, and to never take our love for granted. As we lapsed back into comfortable silence, our gazes returned to the dying embers. I felt a profound sense of gratitude. Gratitude for Elise, for her unwavering strength and compassion, for the lessons we learned, and for the journey ahead. Our reflections on love and trust, 
on the challenges we overcame, and on the promises of our renewed vows were not just the closing of a chapter, but the beginning of a new, more profound narrative. A narrative where love, in all its complexity and simplicity, was the undying flame that illuminated our path, where trust was the cornerstone of our unbreakable bond. This journey of reflection, of understanding the multifaceted nature of love and trust, was a powerful affirmation of our resilience. It underscored the undeniable truth that together with love as our guide and trust as our foundation, there was no storm we couldn't weather, no darkness we couldn't illuminate. Our love, tested and true, was our greatest treasure, a beacon of hope for whatever lay ahead.